Like, hello back to Salon Exit. Uh, today we're talking with Brandon Hodges, painter and also music producer, I've read. Yep. Uh, based in Oakland, California. So, yeah, that's, I guess, that's it for the intro. Okay, awesome. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little late. I was uh, setting up. I wanted to set up my uh, camera setup in here. This is my studio that I'm in. That's really nice. Really nice background. Thanks. Yeah, that's all my all my current inventory of stuff, plus this giant canvas I bought the other day that... Still I'm waiting. Gonna, Still waiting. Yeah, I'm going to start on that one soon. It's huge. Nice. <laughs> What's the, yeah. what's, the, what's the size of it? Uh, 48 by 60 on that one. Whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. And then I've got, I did, I've only done one other one that was that big. And it's this piece, this pink one right here is the same size. Whoa. That's really, yeah. that's a good size. Yeah. 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 The big impact. Same with that. That one's a little bit smaller, <laughs> but. That's yeah. great. Do you have any ideas for it already? Oh. Uh, yeah. Actually. So I've been messing around with, um, I, I just was learning or rather like exploring the um, text to image software. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, text to image. Is it like some sort of AI type of software? Yep, exactly. So you can type in plain sentences and then and then from there it'll generate images. Yeah. So I was playing around with that the other night and actually got a couple of really interesting images from it. And I, th I think that I'm gonna project one of them onto here and mm. paint it. Whoa, um, so nice. it's, almost, it's almost like a collaboration between me and the AI, right? Like the AI generated it, but then I'm gonna project it and then yeah. I won't verbatim copy it, right? Like I'll end up inserting my own self into, into that piece, but using the AI's image as sort of the scaffolding for the whole thing. That's super exciting. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you, can't, you can't really predict what's going to come out out, out of it. Like even you though you have certain images, you'll pr it will probably be a lot of um, like experimentation as you go. Is it something, is it, are you, are you starting currently or is it something that you tried before already? This is brand new to me. So I just was watching down some YouTube wormhole yeah. and then, um, and, and just as like was learning about that, those softwares or whatever. And then I heard it was a video and then they had a separate video that was just like a bunch of talking heads, like their artist interviews that they had done mm -hmm. for the main video. And, um, in there, it was from hearing what artists' opinions were on this software that I was inspired to go and try it out, you know, myself and see what I could do with it. So mm. I think it's a really interesting direction. I definitely don't think that it'll ever replace humans entirely. Mm. But I do think that looking towards the future is super important as an artist to stay relevant and just that's, you know, that's what we're supposed to do as artists, right? Yeah. Is like, uh, and uh, point out things and and just be aware of what's coming next. And so I think that this is a definitely where things are going to go. At least some section of the art world is going to go there. So I want to see yeah. how I can bring it into my process now. I was actually thinking about recently in terms of like you know all of this NFT, the where the digi digital uh, digital art and the physical art becoming digital and the, you know, intertwining uh, aspect of this, these worlds. And I was thinking that, as you said, it is definitely going towards digitalization in, in one way or, or the other. So it's not just, I think, even staying relevant. It's more about, you know, trying those things and seeing how they can impact your, your practice. So that's super nice to hear. Yeah, that. that's a good way to put it. Yeah, rather than the way you you framed it in a way of like it's just another tool like yeah. i have back here right it's just another tube of paint or or something like that you know another can of spray paint um exactly that, that i can bring in so yeah yeah i was i would i would think i mean you can think about these digital art and like uh art generated by I don't know AI or other software types of uh, you know human invention. But me as a as a viewer of art, I would never be really kind of into exploring the the, the behind of the of the art that was like solely created by something digital. I mean, it's nice to look at and like get inspired by 
but what's the most interesting is the the, the human machine kind of uh, you know mix and what's going to come out and i mean it's all about human story in my opinion behind mm-hmm. it because at the end of the day we created it so <laughs> yeah totally maybe at some point when there will be machines that will be creating art art on their own and they will be choosing to do it (laughs) yeah it's a different story but for now it's definitely like a tool i see it yeah and i've i I just always like yeah like i said i'm always looking out for some whatever piece of inspiration or something like that is it something that you're planning on i would say incorporate and maybe just like see how it where it goes and then continue with your with your you know current practice or is, or is, or is it always for your practice is always type of an experimentation yeah i'm always it's it's like i have i can't just stick to doing one thing you know like i can't just say i'm going to uh, like only paint or whatever like i always need to have new inputs um in in my process whether that's like film, books, music, like going to a new place in nature, those, like anything really that I, I try to just, um, and if I feel that I'm reaching or like not really finding the inspiration, then that's when I'll go and seek out stuff like, okay, well, what's something that I haven't tried yet? Or like, what's something that's new out there that I could go and look mm-hmm. into? Actually, I just had this thought, how do you know that you found inspiration like the source you plugged into this new source maybe of inspiration is it something that you comes to as a an idea for a particular artwork or you have this more kind of transcendent type of a feeling that you you know like i'll now i'll be doing more i'll be focusing on maybe like digital art and just like without any expectation or now i'll be working more on 3d now painting or just more just idea to idea like hopping how is it for you Sometimes ideas flash to me at random times. Like mm-hmm. they just, it seemingly just comes out of nowhere. And those are the moments where I have to like sometimes literally run to a piece of paper and, <laughs> and write it down. I have a number of notebooks that are just filled with um, little pieces of paper from, from doing this that have various ideas um, written down on them. Um, most recently, uh, I posted a piece that's called death is freedom. And it's a collage piece that has a chain and a deer antlers in it. And mm. that's, that's one of those ideas that came to me completely randomly in, in this space that I'm in right now. Um, I raise this up just a little bit. So back here in this space, it's covered right now by paintings, but there's a bunch of shelving back here that has a bunch of objects and garbage that I've collected from the city and and that kind of stuff. And so sometimes it's the objects itself that bring me inspiration. So like with that piece, I had the box, I had the antlers and I had the chain just sitting together randomly too. It was just like, I had collected these things and then I happened to just store the deer antlers and the chain inside the box. But then by having those things around and being in this space and seeing that sort of in the background, one day it was just like that idea came as a flash to combine those three things together as this piece Mm. so it's it's sometimes that with painting i have to usually um like i start with the canvas and then i'll just sometimes i'll just put down a thin layer of like raw umber or just any color or whatever just something to get it not to be white anymore and then I, I'll just, I'll I'll often just start doing things. So I'll start throwing various colors or boxes, splotches on there. Um, And I guess through that process of adding things, it's, it's like I add everything and then I take away stuff and then I add a little bit more and then I take away stuff. And then I guess the third way that I approach things is, I doodle a lot. So I, I'm constantly drawing on smaller pieces of paper. And sometimes I'll draw something and I'm so inspired by it that I'm like, this, this has to be a painting now. Like, and so then in that case, I'll scan that drawing, project it onto the canvas with the projector, and trace it around. And then usually it ends up, you know, I won't verbatim copy that. I will end up adding 
elements or taking some things away. Actually, so um, I can show you right here. I have a piece that's, um, this is something, so this is an example of something where it's very maximalist right now. This is a big um, board. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on on here and this is very much an in progress work, but I will definitely take away a ton from this by the time it's done. So this is this is an end stage, like this is one one of the stages of something. So in this case, I have like pieces of fabric stapled onto this wood. Mm -hmm. And then I've just been painting various little things on here, putting it together. So yeah. The way you approach painting is almost like a mix of like expressive sculpture, basically, mm. on, a, on a 2D, kind of like mixed 2D and 3D um, mediums. Especially when it comes to like my collage stuff. Yeah, that's definitely grabbing all those pieces and then bringing them all together. Um, Do you even consider your paintings to be... 2D objects, or they always, to a certain degree, you know, sculptures, maybe over almost even. Super interesting, yeah. <laughs> I'd say, I'd say. So I haven't actually even thought of myself as like a sculptor, but now that you say that, I mean, like these, I call it collaging, but in a sense, like here's so like building something like yeah, this. Yeah, this is like this could be considered some type of sculpture, though, because yeah, really. it. it it's, I mean, it's a collage and it's sort of that, right? So in this case, I would consider this like, this is very much a 3D piece of art. I mean, yes. um, and then even it's interesting what you said about the textures in my paintings, because I guess I've considered those 2D, but in the cases where like, yeah, I have all those layers and stuff there, then they do end up becoming more three-dimensional. I guess the closest, like the most straightforward 2D stuff I do is things that I draw on like my pieces of paper because I usually am not too concerned about textures on those. And those are often done with just pens, um, oil sticks, pastels, that type of stuff. Um, but then when it comes to my collages and when it comes to my paintings, then yeah, I guess I'd consider those more, more 3D works. Nice. Um, so actually I can like to go to the first question I had. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so as I've read somewhere in one of your posts, like introducing yourself uh, as an artist, basically you said that you've been creating art your entire life. And I usually ask a question when you started creating and, you know, you basically answered that question, but then I thought about approaching this question from different kind of perspective and, I wanted to ask you whether you have certain memories, like artistic memories that comes to your mind uh, when you think about those early days of creating something, even whether that was maybe creating art unconsciously. Do you have any of these? Totally. Um, yes, when I look back, I definitely was a huge doodler in class. So I constantly was drawing in the margins and things like that on, on my paper. So that's where definitely in my childhood, I can remember. I also at one point in my childhood was gifted this, um, like how to draw cartoons book or whatever that had like a tape that you would put in and then you'd follow along in like cartoon. But I, um, I have ADHD really bad. So it's really hard for me to stick with things. And uh, especially when I was a kid, it was even more hard than it is. And so I couldn't, it was really hard for me to stick with that, right? So I never completed that cartoon drawing program. I think I did steps one and two, and then I, I moved on. Um, as far as other things, like I was definitely was a huge Lego kid. And um, I also was really, really into playing with uh, action figures and like little toys and stuff. And I would make up these very elaborate lives and situations for these characters. They had like entire storylines behind them, every single one. And I could, like, I knew all of them in my head. And when I would play with them, you know, like they would all have their own little stories. And so me not considering myself an artist most of my life, when I do look back at, at those kinds of things, I'm like, well, I, there were little bits of it were happening. I mean, in a sense, I was creating, I was, I created all these little worlds for myself. Um, I'm not an only child. I have a younger sister who's two years younger than me, but her and I didn't get along when I was growing up. So essentially I, it, a lot of times it was like, I was an only child. I had to 
entertain myself. Um, I have, my parents are divorced. So it was like single parent and they, they're trying to run a household and so on the weekends and stuff, it was often just me and me. And, um, and so, yeah, but I wasn't like, I didn't have paint when I was a kid, you know, like I wasn't painting with a paintbrush or anything like that. Um, uh, so yeah, I think that that probably covers it. I, it, it wasn't really until I got to college. So it wasn't until about 2011 that I bought my first moleskin notebook with blank pages in it and a pack of cheap colored pencils. And then I started to doodle in a notebook proper. And that was the very first time that I was like, okay, this is now I have a notebook with my art in it. Um, yeah. And that's, you can see the kind of, uh, the toy, the toy inspirations, like the early, the, your early, uh, kind of experiences with, with toys and how you kind of incorporating them now. I mean, it's like toyish approach to everyday objects almost, uh, which is quite kind of visible in your art and, uh, and the colors and the stories behind them. It almost feels like there is certain amount of stories to each painting in a way that they kind of like um, episodes from, from a grander stories, each one of your Super paintings. There's, yeah. there's so many like little, little kind of almost symbols in, in your paintings that I kind of noticed. Um, so it's a nice pieces together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's super I guess you're, it's very interesting. You're helping me make connections that I haven't really uh, thought about before. And that like, yeah, because I, even when I am painting, you are correct. Your intuition about that is absolutely correct. Like I'm making up like little storylines that are going into different parts of that painting. And that's when I was saying how I add a bunch of stuff and then I reduce because it's also like, you know, that's being the producer is knowing what, things to take away and what things to leave uh, you know and the balancing between those two things so it's very interesting I completely agree that I am still acting that out in in some way now especially when it comes to, to like these collages and stuff because yeah. literally I am playing with toys sometimes you know um so that's nice um do you think your your music has kind of same some of the similar I don't know how to say it, like features aspect of, of it that would be binding it together with your visual art. Do you think there's like, in terms of your inspiration, do you think it came from the same range of experiences or it's, you know, a little bit different. The, the path you took on music is a little bit different. I, I got that Moleskine notebook I mentioned before I got a guitar. Mm -hmm. So I, that came first. Um, once I started to teach myself how to play guitar, I, I thought that that was my path. I, I was like, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to be a musician. That's it. This is it. But, you know, I, in the creative process, um, the last step is validation. So it's, it's, you know, having other people look at what you've done and say, this is good. Or, you know, um, that response had happened with my music, but it was never to the same level as with my visual art. Um, and I, everything that I did with music, like I have two projects. I have a project called The Painted Road, which is me playing and singing. Um, and then I have another project that's beats, um, mostly rap and hip hop beats, but I have some dance stuff too called Exactly Fine. Both of those came at different times though. Like the Painted Road was my, my project that I made up in college and I was learned how to play all these instruments myself. And that was sort of me discovering that I was a creative and like really identifying with it. Like I knew it my whole life, but no one had ever like, seen it in me and said we are going to foster you like, you should go and do this like you should foster that creativity and take it. it it was you know it was up to me to discover that way later that and, and then i realized like oh wow like i have these abilities that i didn't even know that i had and it's i just love doing it and so i kept doing the music and then in 
2014 was when I started to, it, it was through the Painted Road project that I started to make beats because I had moved into a situation, housing situation where I couldn't play physical, like I couldn't play drums anymore because I didn't have a garage, I didn't have a drum set. So I went to electronic drums and then from doing electronic drums on my songs, I one day was like, well, what if I just made a song like that wasn't connected to any guitar stuff or whatever? I just made a beat. And then that led to me opening up that whole world and really getting into producing and, and making beats and all of that. Um, and, and similar now that I look at how I'm approaching visual art and how I approach making music and making beats, it's a very similar process. It's often pulling from random pieces in my life. Um, and it's often, especially with the painted road, like that's, that's directly, you know, every album I've made is based off of a different time in my life or like things that were going on or a particular muse. In a lot of cases with those albums, I had a muse that I was operate, you know, that was what I was doing it. Um, but then with the beats, it's like, I don't know. I view that as more just like a fun, like expressive thing. Um, I didn't know I could, again, I didn't know I could do that. Started exploring it and then I was like, oh, this is really amazing. Now, in the case of my beats, that validation piece did happen. But it was, it was the pandemic that made me realize that visual arts is where my soul is at. And that like painting and drawing is, is, is the thing. And so then that was when I decided to focus all my energy pretty much or 90% of it, let's say on the visual art piece and maybe like 10% on the music. And so I do that part more on the side now, kind of like, that's my like side hobby. And then visual arts is like my main thing that I'm doing. So, but yeah, I'd say the process is similar the way that I approach music and the music it allow when I'm stuck or not feeling like painting or drawing, I'll pick up the guitar and I'll find that once I've done that, it's, it's like that same creative muscle, regardless of what I'm doing, playing music or painting or drawing, I'm always influencing the other thing through whatever I'm doing. So if I'm playing guitar, that process is going to influence my painting later. I may not be able to articulate how, but it, they all feed off of each other. I actually wanted to ask you, in your view, what an like, artistic experience is in it, like by itself. And it kind of answered this question right now by saying that there, it's almost like a singular muscle that's kind of operating different aspects of your creativity. Uh, so that's, that's really nice. That's also wanted to ask, how do you think your your visual art would look like without the music? You said that whether you you go you go to music when you lack some you know some of the inspiration for that would allow you to make some visual arts. Maybe there there almost be some some of your artworks wouldn't exist without music. Interesting, yeah. And I even think that to expand that outside of it, because music is, I mean, and that's why I picked up the guitar in the first damn place because I was a lifelong huge music fan since I was a very little kid. Like that is, I have to be listening to music nearly from the time I wake up till I go to like. There's music playing in the other room right now on a low level because I need to just have that background noise going at all times and. I mean, it's good for the soul. Like, I just love music so much. So I would say that it's it's not even just about my music that I produce, but it's about, like, if I didn't have music in my life at all, I don't even know. Like, if I hadn't gotten as into music as I was growing up and stuff, I don't know. If, it just may have been a different... I can't... It's hard for me to imagine what, uh, like, this would have looked like then or if it, it would have even come to fruition um without that because i mean music was the first art that i like was you know that i've been into from a very early age um i grew up both my parents huge music fans so that was instilled into me in a, at a very early age just appreciation for music and like i went to my first concert when i was 10 or something like that um 
I, that may not be that early, but for me, it feels like I was a little oh, kid. Early. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. I was thinking my mom, about those things when I was 10 years old. Right? Yeah, my mom was just very, I had a young, I have a very young mom. So she was like, was, you know, she's like, I want to go to the concert and like, do you want to go too? So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I like I, music is just, it's, it has to be part of my life. And I don't think that I would be able to do what I do with visual arts without it, truly. Um, earlier, yeah. earlier, I asked you uh, about your early artistic experiences and you didn't mention that because I see that it's so part of your your personality that it was like almost as a background to your whole kind of mind that wasn't that that was one of your earliest obviously creative experiences like experiencing music but it was, it was something that you, you didn't go even come to your mind when you when you're answering that question because it was I know, so huh? embedded it's, in you yeah that is really interesting yeah because it's almost like i don't appreciate it or something like i just take it for granted i guess in a mm. way so I mean, you pointing that out is actually you almost yeah. need you almost needed to as you said to maintain your you know your you you where you're going with with your art and i guess life in general i guess totally totally yeah i need a soundtrack i, I need a soundtrack for sure <laughs> and whether that's a soundtrack that i've created because sometimes with the music it's like i'm creating a gap that i haven't found you know like i want to hear this sound but i can't find it somewhere else so i just all create it then yeah so. do you think it, it, it is similar with with your art do you some sometimes uh, with your visual art do you sometimes feel like you like to experience something visually just like experience something visually that's why you create it or Do you, do, you, do you know what I mean by this like question? Because sometimes I feel like some I would like to experience something and I can't really find it, so I kind of try to piece some you know things together uh, in a you know like creative uh, side of a of a hustle. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think consciously I'm doing that, mm -hmm. but I mean I'm creating something to fulfill something right like so there's a anytime i'm creating something it is to fulfill something within me yeah. you know like that's i like i wouldn't do it if i i didn't feel like that because it's very much it gets a it's a source of therapy for me and so when i'm when i'm going to it it's like i mean that's i like therapies in session basically at that point mm. um yeah amazing Yeah, I wanted to ask about your 3D work in general, like because sometimes you create artworks that are, you know, purely three dimensional sculptures. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed. Is it something that you um, do you feel do you feel clear distinction in how you perceive it to your other, like, for example, to the, the, the art, uh, the, the paintings? Or is it something that or maybe maybe better question would be what came first in terms of your you know visual art the mm. sculptures or the paintings or was it you know organic you don't even remember which which one was first such a good question it it was and i know this definitively it was first the the sculptures mm. over the paintings um and the it started when i got a dog <laughs> so uh, prior to me getting a dog i was not A, like I didn't really take walks or anything like that. I was a pretty like, I don't know. I just didn't do that. It wasn't a part, exercise and walking and stuff wasn't a part of my life. But then mm. I got the dog and my lifestyle changed because of her. And so now I'm walking around this neighborhood that I've lived in for years, but hadn't really ever explored um, on foot. And I'm noticing all this trash all over the place and, and, super bothered by it and sometimes like because i'm so i'm like really in tune with the world around me i'm like very observant i to, like i don't like it sometimes i wish i could just like turn it off and like have more of like just tunnel on like what's in front of me but i notice everything i notice what's on the ground i notice like the little cracks and stains on the sidewalk and stuff like that and it's not just noticing it's like If I notice a particular color of a stain on the sidewalk, I will think for the next two blocks what that could be, right? Mm -hmm. Or like how that got there, that type of thing. So it's like I um and and so by noticing 
all everything that was around me, I just started, you know, part of noticing what's on the ground was just seeing all this trash around. And then it was like, sometimes the trash was really interesting. It would be like a big Lego brick, or it would be like a weird twisted piece of metal or something like that, or a hubcap from a car or something, you know, and I was, I just, I was like, I'm just gonna, and then around the same time, I read a New Yorker article that was an interview with this artist and I can't remember his name. I have that magazine somewhere around here, but this is madness. So who knows where it is at this point. Um, but uh, he had a similar thing where he collected and he worked a lot with textiles. So he used like fabrics and stuff like that to like tear up different pieces of fabric and put them onto canvases and create these like really interesting like timelines and stories and stuff like that with all these textile fabrics and he would also sometimes incorporate found objects and a seed was planted for this too like maybe two or three years before this where I have a friend one of my very closest friends is very very into visual arts and he had a past to our modern art museum in San Francisco and would occasionally invite me to go along. Mm -hmm. Through that, I discovered Marcel Duchamp. And, and by discovering the ready-mades and, and learning about him, that was kind of what planted the seed of, oh, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can take whatever and it can be art. Um, and, and when I look at the timeline of things, like that was where the seed was planted. Then I got the dog. Then I started walking, seeing the trash picking it up as I didn't even know exactly what I was going to do. You know, I had read this New Yorker article and this guy with these fabrics. And then I saw the trash and I started collecting and I'm like, well, let me try doing that. But just with this garbage, let me just try gluing these little things together. And then I just, I found it so therapeutic. I found that it was, you know, I could truly convert this garbage into something beautiful. So, and then Initially, I, I made a collage. I don't even think I painted it. I think I just glued the objects on there. But then it, at a certain point, somebody said, I think I was showing somebody and they were like, why don't you paint them? Like, why don't you do colors or whatever? And so then I, I, I was like, oh, yeah, like, let me try that out. So then I started painting. And then from painting the collages, that was when I was like, oh, okay, well, what if I just painted? What mm -hmm. if I just got a canvas and painted on it rather than gluing a bunch of stuff to it? So it was definitely the collages brought me to the, the painting and the drawing. That's amazing. I really love how you have this very clear vision of the of the time frame, the time of your the, the progress of your of your artistic practice. It's, it's almost go, as if going back to the, the stories once again, you know, having the, mm -hmm. the timeline of it. I also wanted to ask you about your inspirations, whether that would be visual arts, painters, any, you know, totally any art that you look up to. You already mentioned Duchamp, which is, yeah, really nicely kind of matching uh, the, the everything you just said. So, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, this is um. so I have because going along the ADHD line, poor memory. So I, I keep a lot of notes in my phone. So I have a artist I like uh, note actually. So, and this is in no particular order, but these are artists that I'm definitely influenced by hugely. And when, at least I try, I, I don't like to just find an artist and then do a little cursory glance at what they've done. Like, I want to do a deep dive. I want to know about that artist's life. I want to know what their early work looked like, who they were influenced by. Like, I try to learn everything that I can about somebody, and then I try to consume like their whole body of work if I can. Um, and really, and then I, in the most ideal situation, I'll learn all about it, and then I'll go find it in person, and I'll go see it in person. So, one artist, this is my my favorite artist right now, is Basquiat by far. Um, he was somebody that I discovered later. Like I didn't, when I first started approaching painting and drawing all that, I didn't know who he was. And then it was random looking at stuff online or whatever. I saw his name mentioned or saw a piece of his work. And then once I discovered him and did it, you know, started learning about who he was. It's like, oh my God, this is, you know, he's like definitely 
I just don't, I can't wrapping my head around Basquiat is too much, you know, like I just, his mind is something else. So, and I had a chance in April of this year to go to New York and see this amazing exhibit that his family has set up of just his whole, like it has a bunch of work that was never seen. And so I got to do that. And that sort of completed that circle of him being my favorite artist. Like I have to be able to see their work in person before I can say that's my favorite artist. You know, like I need to be able to stand in the presence of those textures and feel it. Um, so the other one that's like that for me, and I had a similar experience in Amsterdam when I went to the museum is Van Gogh. So hugely into him. He was probably the first visual artist that I did. He was, he was the first one that I did that with where did a huge deep dive on him and all that. Actually Duchamp is one that I'm now going back. I just recently got acquired the Duchamp dictionary that, you know, has a bunch of stuff in there about him, but he's one that I'm currently uh, attempting to learn more about. Um, so some other ones here, like I really love Yayoi Kusama is another one that's that's huge for me. I mean, when somebody says, what are your favorite artists? The first three that I'll name is Basquiat, Van Gogh, Yayoi Kusama. Um, and you're currently and then, exploring Duchamp. Duchamp, yep. And, and that's one. Uh, Warhol, Keith Haring, uh, Mark Rothko is a big one too for me. Um, Let's see, Jasper Johns Rauschenberg is another huge one. Um, his his assemblage work and and um, just the way that he approached work is hugely influential to me. I mean, he was he was actually you know in addition to that New Yorker article going back to the early seeds that were planted when my friend was bringing me to the MoMA. He was one where when I when I would see his pieces in the MoMA, I was just completely in awe and like i just to me it was like the audacity you know to do that so like to to even think about something like that and to come up with some of the stuff that he made i was just completely blown away never seen anything like it in my life um yeah so yeah there's some others on here but I, i'd say you know picasso's in the mix i lo i like him i mean horrible person but great great work um and and mostly with him like i really like his doodles a lot like the his picasso's drawings are more influential to me if anything than his paintings were um so uh let's see de kooning that's another one willem de kooning when i first started painting so during that period where i was moving from collaging to doing painting um he was one i was i was exploring oils early on and so i learned about his approach um and and just how he worked with oils and different things and so he's also somebody that i would say is pretty influential um in in the way that i approach uh, when i talked to you earlier about initially approaching the canvas and sort of just putting stuff on there that like de kooning's approach was put it on there and then he would sit back and just stare at the work for a long time and i'd say it's that's part of my process is looking at what i'm doing like periods of active and then inactive time with the work direct influence of de kooning like his process i pulled i stole that and pulled that into my process where i give work that I'm doing a long time to just sit around in the spaces that I'm in. Um, so like in my living room, I constantly have probably three paintings sitting below my TV mm -hmm. because as I'm watching television, I can see the three works that I'm working on and I will literally random things will just pop up and then I'll go and just add that little thing to this painting. Um, so amazing. So, is it something that you are always kind of looking into trying to incorporate some of the maybe like techniques or um, philosophies, um, how you appro approach the art? What is it that you interested in, you know, while why studying certain artists versus, you know, just experiencing it? Because those who have done it before me, there's, they did something right, obviously. Mm. Um, and it's, I think it's that also this idea of 
who did this person, who influenced this person and sort of going down that line that comes from. So this is an area where I can directly say that like music, my process of making music has influenced my visual arts Mm. Um, because with music, I, I would pull stuff. So like I'd be listening to a, a song or whatever, and then I'd, find a certain spot in there and it'd be like, okay, I'm going to, or I guess I should say, I would find an artist and really do a deep dive on them, go and find their whole catalog or whatever. And then once I was done with their catalog, I wanted to know, well, who were they listening to, to make them make this music? So I think when it comes to visual artists, if for me, it's, it's about finding out how they worked and who they were influenced by their process, but it's also about studying like what they did in their work. And I'm looking to, if any of those pieces resonate with me, um, then I'll try to find some way to incorporate it in. So whether that's like, I started using oil sticks because when I was learning about Basquiat, Basquiat used oil sticks all the time. I had no idea what an oil stick was. Mm -hmm. So I went to the art store and I bought some oil sticks and I brought them home and I just started doing stuff. And then I absolutely love them. And now I use them all the time. I mean, they're an essential of my box of them is out there right now, but I, they're an essential part of my work. And I, I, I absolutely love them. So it's, it, that's an example of where I guess directly I learned something that this artist did. And then I said, well, let me try that out. So I think it's kind of like that too. Like I'll read something that an artist did or some technique they used, and then I'll try it out. And if it doesn't feel good, we scrap it. If it feels good, we just incorporate it into the process. That is beautiful because it kind of reminded me um I mean, almost as if you're studying the, the cultural fabric, what makes the current art scene what it is and what, you know, what incorporated it actually um, reminded me of this, um, you know, Grimes. Uh, I've, I've, I've listened to her podcast recently, like she was on a podcast and she said, paraphrasing, almost like, I mean, in a way that you approach your art she described what art is i Mm. I think in my opinion where she said that it's like a misconception that people have very often that people think about art about that it is something you know something that you shouldn't be really like copying or it's something like personal to this very kind of selfish personal way looking at art how people kind of think about art culturally like masses i would say but it, what it is in reality is that just this mosaic of of people from the past and what came before you and what what new image that created what kind of new evolutionary um, cultural product it end up with so you kind of really nicely basically doing that in your art mm. and it's really mm. nice to see a visual artist who is doing exactly that I mean maybe not in your way you're doing it so uh, right yeah that's beautifully put thank you yeah that's awesome yeah definitely i'm the sum of my parts you know like i'm my like i'm always interested in like okay when i was talking about inputs i'm like what new inputs can i get that are going to influence my output Mm. yeah that's amazing um Maybe we can move to the, um, the the painting. I would like to be the the, the main feature of the conversation. Yeah, for sure. The, the creature thirty one is that the full um, is that the full uh, title of it? The creature thirty one. Yeah, let me okay. get it. Cool, cool. So, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, let's talk about this one. This is a. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I really like the colors in this one yeah. particularly. I, I like the I like the uh, the composition. Why is it? Was was the was the story behind the the the, the topic the the title of it? Is yeah. It okay. Any? So the the creatures thing. Yeah. So that because I this is in the creatures thing. Just it it was an accident, I guess. And it's mm-hmm. you know I don't even I don't know how I came up with this idea. So I have an obsession with teeth. Mm-hmm. I I've always been. I've been obsessed with teeth since I was, I had braces as a teenager mm-hmm. and uh, that got me very obsessed with teeth because I, I was really bad with my braces, like 
chewing things I wasn't supposed to. And I had to have them on for a long time and I got very obsessed with teeth. And so when I st started making visual art, then I'm, I'm making, a, you know, I just started painting these things that I'm like, this isn't an animal that I know. I mean, maybe that's a dinosaur, but it's like kind of, it could be a lizard. I don't know. Right. It could be an alligator with two legs. It, it just, these things I started painting and I'm like, these aren't animals. They're more like creatures to me. And then the numbering system, this is the part that I don't know how I came up with it, but I, I number the creatures based off the number of teeth in their mouth. So this one has 31 teeth. Mm. Um, so that's why it's called creature 31. And, yeah. um, and did you count the, did you count the teeth after painting the creature? And then, no. Uh, so that's another thing too. So, and, and it's, I have since realized that this was going to be too hard to do and that I was going to quickly run out of numbers but originally my intent was to um you can't see it but along the other side of this little wall right here i have a numbers a bunch of numbers written down and i was keeping track of like 8 12 15 of the number the creatures that i've already used mm. but then to what you're asking i realized that if i continue to try to create unique numbers for the creatures then I was going to have to use that number to determine what the creature would look like, right? Because the mouth size would have to be able to accommodate the number of teeth. And as I start to run out of lower numbers, it's going to just be big. So then I have to make these huge mouths with like all these teeth and all that. I realized that that was going to be too much to do. Mm -hmm. So now it's more, I, I don't think about that part until um the end hold on one second i'm gonna get you another example Amazing. so here's something that's in progress this is a mm. creature there's no teeth yet no so i am painting this right now and that will probably be you know i'm almost there like i need to do the eye mm. not like i may do some other stuff here but the the mouth is there what i will do is i will see how many teeth I can fit into there. So maybe they're going to be, in this case, they're probably going to be smaller and I'm probably going to have more of them. Mm. Um, well, densely packed. Yeah, exactly. So that's, it's, it's kind of like, instead of the original way with me trying to make them unique was going to have to determine, right? But now it's like, I do whatever it is I'm going to do. And then when I get to this stage, then it's like, okay, how big is that mouth? And then that determines how many teeth I'll be able to fit into there. That's amazing. Actually, you made me um, a little bit redefine the way I, the way I look and um, at creative experiences because you just mentioned this this episodes of you know having having braces. But so to a certain degree, that was an ex artistic experience on its own. Because mm. it contributed to to your the, to the entire range of your of your paintings and where how you developing your you know your your art. So that's super interesting. That that was one of your artistic experiences that you didn't know would turn out to be really influential in uh, in a uh, you know coming years. Totally, totally, yeah. <laughs> Wonder yeah. how many of such experiences we have. Uh, like artists, how many of these ex experiences that aren't artistic per se, you know, contribute into the, the, the actual practice and the style? Totally. Yeah. You know, that process has been really interesting to me because it's, I often am discovering things in my past that I didn't think were that influential. Hmm. But then through doing my visual art, certain things come out where then I can then go and see, like mm -hmm. you're saying, that like, oh, that braces experience had a bigger impact on me and now comes out in my work and my visual art. This chicken is another one, too, that like I grew up around chickens when I was younger. And so that's like, you know, one day I was painting that, that sky and that ground and then 
there was a blank space for whatever the main thing was going to be. And I was like, I'm going to put a chicken. And then it was afterwards that I connected. Oh, I grew up with chickens. So oh, was, that's so cool. Yeah. I was like a um, self psychoanalysis. Art yeah. Of by accessing the, by accessing the subconscious, you slowly, gradually rediscovering your, your past and your, yourself who you are right now. That's yeah. really nice. Um yeah, I actually wanted to also ask about how you decide on, you know, start incorporating new elements, like, for example, the, the letters in your paintings, or because I, I assume that at some point you started adding these, you know, descriptions on the on the painting, something that was like describe the, 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 the scene on, on the painting. How is it that you maybe how do you think that that works in your art you know the the, the adding of new elements to to the compositions to the, mm -hmm. and then yeah continuing that so i i always have um tv or it's generally in in when i'm working i have not only tv on but i also will have music playing or i will have the TV on and I'll have a podcast in my ears um, or, you know, it's some combination of that where there's always these, there's always some background visual thing going on on the TV. And then there's always some audio going on in my ears or some combination of those things. So sometimes the TV's in my ears, the music's playing. Um, in addition, I'll also have a number of reference books laid out in front of me so whether that's artists that i love and i have their coffee table books and i'll have those open in front of me whether that's science textbooks or um those kinds of things i i always have i have to have stuff around that's that's going to be um influential to me and so a lot of times the words and and things that you see in my paintings are a a result of things that I heard on the TV while I was making that particular work um, or things that I heard on the podcast, like certain word will jump out at me and then I'll put that into the painting or, or the drawing that I'm working on. Um, and I also, if I'm not working, so if I'm not making something and I hear a interesting phrase, somebody says something to me interesting in a conversation, I'll pull out my phone and I'll write it down on a note. Um, and if I'm home, I have an index card folder. And so I'll grab an index card and I'll write down whatever the quote was. So I have like a section of TV quotes. I have a section of quotes from books. I have a section of quotes that people, my friends or whatever family said. Mm -hmm. um, and so then sometimes if I'm working on a piece and I'm like, oh, well, I want to put some words in here. I'll just go into that little index card folder and randomly pull something. And if it feels like it fits within that work or whatever, then I'll insert those, those words into there. So in this way, it's like a lot of my work is like a collage of my life in some respects, because I'm picking all these little pieces of either media that I'm consuming podcasts that I love relationships that I have with people. And I'm pulling all of that stuff in, into my work. Mm. That's amazing. Actually, regarding the the inclusion of the, the text, I was really um, in, intrigued by this other painting, um, which, um, one second, it kind of, on this document, I have it here. It's, I think it's untit Untitled Creature 8. This one is really interesting. Yes. Well. Okay. Yes. Um what 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 is this what is this medical approach to it kind of got it yeah 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 the the, the spinal the spinal yeah, yeah, yeah. things so that's uh, that's from um i would say that this obsession with like anatomy and that kind of thing and just i've always been fascinated by the human body i studied psychology in school so mm -hmm. i you know I'm, I'm like super interested in how the human brain works and the mind works and can't really study the mind without considering the body. And so there's always, even though I didn't directly study anatomy or whatever, 
I did have to learn about parts of the brain and all that stuff. And I've always loved that stuff so much, but not in a formal academic setting, Mm -hmm. you know, like I wanted to learn that stuff, but the way that I wanted to. And so, and then also this is a direct influence that I can point to Basquiat for because his story of getting hit by a car when he was a kid and then reading Gray's anatomy in the hospital I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Like he was studying an anatomy book. And, you know, I know that there's long, a very long history of artists being obsessed with the human form and anatomy and and all of that. Um, So that's when I went. I first tried to get a copy of Gray's Anatomy, but that was not obtainable. I think it was probably because it was too expensive or whatever. So then I just went and bought a random anatomy. I went and looked up what the best anatomy textbook was, found the older edition on eBay and bought that. So I have an anatomy textbook that I refer to. And so like with creature eight, it was, I had the body painted and then I was looking like, what, what else do I want to do? And so then I just went and looked up uh, skeletal structures in the anatomy book. And then I found that, you know, the line, the, that our spinal cord, each part is named was so mind blowing to me. I'm like, this is amazing. Let me put that into there. Yeah. So it was, you know, it's stuff like that where I, I um, sometimes will have the bodies of whatever the creature is and it'll just be a blank body. And then I'll, I'll find what piece of anatomy I want to stick into there. Regarding composition, is it something that how do you approach the composition? Because this one, for example, is like some of them are quite open. Some of them are very closed. So yeah, that you think even about a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and when I first started approaching painting something that I, there was two things that immediately I, I was, I, I recognized in myself that I'm innately talented at, I'm innately talented at color. So mm. And I, and I expanded that too by studying color theory and I still do that, but I, I just like, I don't consciously think about color theory when I'm painting because intuitively I just put things together that work. Um, yeah. And, and so that I recognize that. And then the second thing I recognized was that I have an ability like a, a natural instinct for composition and mm-hmm. composing things in a way where they like, they make sense and they, and they work. Um, Very strong impact. Yeah. I think it's, it's for me, it's like that whole adding and taking away thing. Like it's a feeling it really. And I wish that I could articulate exactly like what the thought process is behind it, but that's, I don't, I don't know. And I try not to question it much because I feel like yeah. if I do, yeah. then it might slip away somehow or whatever. But yeah. I, so I just, there's a feeling that I have that something looks right. Where like that, that when I look at it, I don't feel like chaos or um, I, even too calm, right? I feel like the balance between those two things, because I feel like that's what I'm constantly trying to balance the chaos of my mind. And like, also like trying to maintain you know, uh, as a, as a person. And those things are always at any given point, there's like five, six, seven different things going in my head. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's just, it's just, I get a feeling that it's, that it's there, that mm-hmm. that's it. Is the, is the taking out and adding to a painting also regarding the, does it also regard the composition Do you change the composition while, you know, developing the painting or it's, at some point at any early stage maybe it's just set and then no adding more colors or yeah that's such a good question that's so it it definitely changes and sometimes so like this piece this one right here that originally was not black all around it um and that whole blue section also wasn't there there was a number underneath those layers are a bunch of um there was like a bunch of drawings and there was a bunch of words underneath there too right and so originally when i had been painting working on the creature that's in the middle of this one i i was really focused on that part right and then once i got done with the creature stepping back in that um willem de kooning way and staring and observing the piece for a while 
that's when I realized that like there was just the composition wasn't right. It was too, it wasn't balanced. And so in that case, that's when I came in and removed, right? Removed everything until I just, I knew that I wanted to keep the one element of the creature, everything else needed to go at that point. And then once I had painted over everything I didn't want with black, again, there was another period of contemplation. And through then that period, then I painted this blue section and then the other blue section that's down here. Um, and then that's where the, the composition came from in that one. So I think it, it really depends on the, on the piece. Mm. Actually, um, that, that reminded me of, of another artist in a way of adding to uh, the composition and changing the painting as, as the, as it goes. And have you ever thought, or do you have any, any of recordings of your paintings have you have you thought about recording of the paintings because i was always interested in while like, experiencing art just you know consuming art myself i was always fascinated with the the under paintings of what was you know on the on the, the, the prime canvas what was the first sketches and because there's there's a lot of information that is hidden in an artwork like nowadays we can record the, the, the paintings, the painting yep. process. It's super interesting. I would like to see some of your kind of uh, journeys. And that reminded me of another artist, David Cho. You know David Cho? Yes, I love him. Yeah, I, love I love him too. Him. And yeah. so he recalled some of his some of his uh, paintings. So yeah. um, that reminded me of your of your process as well. And have you thought about this? Ever? I mean, this is I needed to hear this to be honest with you, because video yeah is i mean you know we're all as creators like we're at the unfortunately we're at the whim of the stupid instagram algorithm right or yeah, exactly. TikTok algorithm and um and they recently and like i think it was only just a month ago they changed it and now it prefers videos mm -hmm. so as a creator right i've had been posting for a year on my instagram account with static images getting tons of engagement, all that. And then all of a sudden there was just like, it was like engagement, engagement. And then one day it was just like pff, tanked. Like it just dropped off the cliff with posting static images as far as engagement went. And it's literally because they switched it to prefer video. So you bringing this up, I say I need to hear it because it's something that I'm learning to do, to be very conscious, you know, because I have to remember to set up the camera gear before I start painting. And, and, you know, not, it's, it's not that I'm only doing it because of the algorithm, but also to what you're saying, I know that it's interesting to folks. Like I know that seeing that process and then even for me having a record of everything that something went through, um, you know, at my, I guess like I, the way that I've been doing that and I haven't been all that diligent about it as far as doing it with every piece, but I will take pictures of the paintings like throughout the processes. Um, and you know, I, but yeah, this is something that I definitely am thinking about and that I, I'm love to um, see it. I would love to see it. I'm, yeah. 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 Well, I, <laughs> I need to hear that then. So that's, that's good. Yeah. So maybe I will ask you the last question. Cool. Uh, you cool. can wrap it up. Yep. Um, which would be, what do you think is art? Oh my God. I know I saw this on the, <laughs> on the thing. And then I was like thinking about this this morning. I have the timer up too. So I have six minutes to answer this question. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, uh, art is as the, it, it, it's the, ex it's the expression of, of being human um, it, it's the expression of what we as a species are. Um, and it's the physical or conceptual manifestation of our consciousness, subconsciousness as artists, but then also the collective unconscious is also always being pulled into that. So I, I really do think that art is, it's, it's the human experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is, it's what it is to be a human because we're the, you know, yes, elephants can paint, but they yeah. can't, you know, they're not, it's not the same. We're the only ones who really can do this. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that's, it's fundamentally human. That's what, that's what art is. It's, it's what, yeah. 
yeah built on it like i think the the building as you said the collective so the building aspect of it's it's kind of important yeah it's really nice it's really nice well put yeah thank you so much <laughs> this has been amazing honestly like this is this is really great yeah thank you very much um yeah. also if you wanna if you would like to add anything what you're currently working on if there are any kind of collaborations that you're working on or way people can um see your art i'm currently in london so <laughs> yeah but, yeah right uh, right around where you live yeah so i got i mean i actually have a show tonight that i'm doing at, at this gallery in oakland um so i have a couple pieces in that but then coming up i've got um soon i'm gonna be on this website called curina mm -hmm. um which is a platform to rent artworks so my, my work's gonna be on there um pretty soon i have to send in my my artist bio and stuff so you'll be able to find my work on curina pretty soon and then in the summertime I'm working with Pancakes and Booze, which is a really big art festival thing. And I'm going to be in the San Francisco show. So those are the things that I have coming up. And then other than that, brandonhodgesart.com and then my Instagram, brandonhodges.art. That's, That's where you can find me. Yeah. Definitely. We'll plug everything and we'll put it everywhere around the screen. Right on. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for, the, so cool. for your time. Yeah. And thank you. For taking more of your precious time. Um, right. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's been awesome.